And I'm going to hold you to your words. We're going to open up this discussion because what you just described is utopia for an anarchist that, you know, we don't need. I, hold on. Just let just give me a chance. OK, I say utopia that we don't need government in this instance at the Portland prayer rally that was convened. We had a permit. I even have a comment about permits, but ultimately we have permitting for these people to go to the federal park uh, to have a prayer r- rally to do a march. And notification was sent out. So we have government that was notified through this permitting process. And I believe that since we don't have utopia, we have a government that's in there you know, controlling things. I believe that the government should be, especially if you have Marxists, if you have domestic terrorists with black masks that are wanting to interfere with somebody's constitutionally protected, permitted. Hold on. Just give me a moment. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold you to your words here okay and i'm going to broadcast these words right now hold on hold on a second um you have about uh 40 or 50 conservatives oh please tell me that the volume uh, is up tucked behind uh just a few federal protective service guys and then you have a uh relatively large uh, anti uh, crowd across the street and i'll show you that too um there are on the other side of the street right there, on the corner, most of that is people in black block. Um, there's a few conservatives, like a Proud Boy group, coming across the street now to go join the rest of the conservatives. Okay, with... With don't... Oh, sorry. With uh, don't tread on me flags, go ahead and, and speak up. The people carrying the Gadsden flags and shields and whatnot, I just showed the audience are uh, being yelled at as they're going across to the conservative side of things. I'm over here, of course, on uh, you know uh, on the side of a team anarchy. You know, I, I love you, Pete, but we have a lot of political differences. But I have nothing but mad respect for you, brother. <laughs> I'll always respect you because you're very well intentioned and you're the man. You know, I mean, I'll always view you as family, brother. But, uh, you know, I would love to, like, you know, just call you up sometime and, you know, have a conversation, anarchist versus conservative. And maybe we could actually, instead of swinging clubs, we could actually have some understanding and, you know, some kind of, like, you know, political dialogue that's sorely missed in this country, you know? I. I absolutely uh, agree, and I I love you because... All right, now, this is what I want to say. Now, you were, and, and I asked you, uh, by the way, this is a news broadcast. We've been censored. We were blocked out. Uh, Mike, uh, I want to be able to have this conversation because I believe the most important people that are to weigh in on this conversation <laughs> are you and me or we the people to say, okay, from, from your perspective, you made a comment in this broadcast, and I had you, and I said, I want you to report on the ground. On that side, I want to hear your perspective, right? And you did. You said, those people over there have the police protecting them. And you were, uh, I'm not going to use the term sympathetic, uh, but you were on the other side. And you said, I hope we have that conversation. I hope we can talk about this. And here we are talking about it. Now, sir, you tell our listening audience why you opposed having these Peaceful, prayerful protesters on the other side, protected by police. Why were you opposed to that? Now, first of all, Pete, I don't necessarily oppose them being protected by police. Mm. Um, I oppose people that are polarized into their their various camps trying to play the victim. And please allow me, since I live in the community of yes. Portland and I've been observing police here for yep. years. Yes, sir. I, I there, there was four groups at that at uh, at that event, and they all had different agendas. And I am uniquely placed because I'm not neither far far left or not far right, and I scrutinize law enforcement. But let's go through all the groups, okay? This is my perspective. Mm-hmm. You have Federal Protective Service and the Department of Homeland Security. Mm-hmm. And their job and their mandate is to defend free speech in Shemansky Park, which is a federal property. Yes. Okay? They did that. They had two uh, perimeter fences— with about uh, 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 48 to 50 feet space uh, in between. And then they had the uh, Patriot Prayer Group uh, rallying in the center of the park. Then they had phalanxes of officers with less lethal uh, FN-303s, sponge batons, and flashbangs. And, uh, 
you know, they protected the rights of people to, to engage in their free speech on federal property. That's what they did. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not opposed to that. Okay. I'm opposed to them using force in a way that's uh, disproportionate from one group to the other. Okay, and th that's the first group we have to deal with. And, what, and hold on, stop so, right there. How was it disproportionate? Are you are you saying that it was disproportionate? I am. Okay. Okay. In what regard? When, sure. Okay, first of all, the park that's right across the street from Shemansky is Chapman Square, and that's where the anarchists always rally. Uh, Joy Gibson has done this for two years. He's had uh, had rallies in Shemansky in the federal park, uh, you know, a dozen rallies, and it, it always plays out the same way. The, the anarchists gather on the, on the city property across the street, and the way they set up the barricades is – you can't throw anything from uh, from Chapman or Lounsdale Squares and, and interrupt or hurt anyone in the rally the way they have the fences set up. And I think that's brilliant because that doesn't allow anybody to be hurt inside the park. It's it's good. But, like, here's the thing. When, when the city of Portland ordered uh, Chapman and Lounsdale to be closed because they, they defined the whole event as a riot, then federal police shot – at least 500 rounds of, of pepper ball less lethal into that crowd, okay, and disperse them. First of all, federal cops aren't supposed to be enforcing anything or using force against people on city property unless there's violence. No one on the Antifa side was throwing anything across the, uh, across the street and into the federal park when they started firing all the less lethal. Mm -hmm. The only... When, when stuff was thrown was when the crowds interacted with each other. But please, Pete, let me continue uh, to, to illustrate the other three groups that were involved that day, okay? Yes, yeah, because I need to interject because okay. you just said something that, that that's not factually correct, but go ahead. Okay, okay. Uh, correct me after, please. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, the second group is Portland Police Bureau, okay? Portland Police Bureau's mandate is to try to uh, manage traffic and control traffic and protect the march. It was a permitted march. OK, mm -hmm. Joey Gibson got a permit. And when you get a permit for a protest march in Portland, one of the things you have to do is you give the police your route. You plan out which way you're going to walk your marchers. OK, that's a very important point point for later. Portland Police Bureau, what they do when there's a large protest or a march is they follow the march on. Uh, say you're you're marching on this street, then a block this way and a block this way. There'll be rows of cops in riot gear on vehicles stacked on vehicles and they will follow along your your route. And if there's a hot spot or something they need to squash, they're going to leap off their trucks take care of it, and separate the two parties. And that's what Portland Police Bureau attempted to do. They failed, but they attempted to keep both groups away from each other, but they did it in a way that was unnecessarily brutal. They did it in a way that could have very well harmed or even killed some of the patriots or the anarchists. They were using blast ball grenades to separate the crowds because they didn't want to break a nail or they didn't want to risk officer safety by trying to run in there and physically move the groups apart. They decided to use less lethal blast ball grenades, which uh, in 2017 or no, 2016, I filmed a journalist being hit in the face with a piece of shrapnel from that that buried its way in his cheek and almost killed him. It's called police grenade rips journalist's face open. So they were lobbing these explosives between both groups of fighting people in a, a willy-nilly sort of uh, way without any regard for public safety because they didn't want to risk officer safety to support the groups. Now, the third group I want to talk about is Patriot Prayer and Joey Gibson. Okay, he has every right to say anything he wants, and I respect that. I respect his right to say anything he wants and anything he likes. Okay, uh, I think, you know, people's freedom of expression, their right to rally and march should be protected and defended 100 percent. But when he got his permit for his march, he gave Portland Police Bureau his marching route. He planned to have his march march directly into Antifa. OK, he's he's done this dozens of times. You can uh, if he would have had his march march in the opposite direction up the street, there's nothing but but uh, bank buildings and there's no place for Antifa to rally and attack them.